Hello everybody, today I'm going to be filming a video with my mum. Hello again. Hello. Hello. And we're doing a video on selective mutism from like my mum's perspective and what my mum thinks of it because I did actually do this video like a couple of months ago and it's got like quite a lot of views on it. It's got like, over 2,000 views on it now mm -hmm. and all of the comments, like there's literally, I get comments every day on that video of other people's experiences and most of the comments come from like mums of people suffering from it uh -huh. so we thought we'd make this video sort of me going through and I'm gonna ask mum like quite a lot of questions just so that she can talk about it so I've written down a bunch of questions that I'm just gonna ask her and if there's anything that you want to ask in the comments or just talk about then just write it down in the comments but if you don't know what selective mutism is then go and watch my video or just research it because there's a very simple definition okay so I'm basically going to be asking mum questions because obviously in that video I spoke about my own experience so this is more about what mum thinks of it and that kind of thing and I have done further research since doing that video but basically I'm just going to ask some questions. Well, so yeah I kind of suggested that we did this video didn't I because when I watched George's video on selective mutism I found myself wanting to sort of add lots to it you know I thought I had a lot more to add to it so yeah and now's my chance so we oui. let's kick off so my first question is when did it all start and when did you first like find out about there was something wrong with me okay we was always aware that we got a really shy daughter <clears throat> from the word go and um, you know a lot of kids are shy and stuff but um, whenever I went to work, Georgia was always looked after by family. She didn't go out to childminders or nurseries or anything like that. When she was two, about two and a half, I think it was, she went to playgroup. And, um, and she didn't like me leaving her for the first day. She had to sort of be held back and she was kicking off. I was like, that was a bit traumatic. I was like, oh, well. And, and the, 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 the carol, the leader was like, it's all right, it's all right. They do always do this, fine, just go. So I just went. And uh, then a year later, Carol came to uh, have a word with me and said does Georgie talk I was like yeah <laughs> and I was like absolutely gobsmacked I was like yeah she talks all the time at home she says well she's never said a word in all the time she's been here I and can't then, remember saying anything and then I thought oh Jesus we've got a problem and yeah so that's when I became aware that yeah. Georgie was about I'd say three and a half at that point yeah, yeah. I can't remember saying a word. I think as I get older, I've definitely got better, but slowly getting better. So I think in like that kind of age, I didn't talk at all. Mm -hmm. But then eventually you kind of talk a little bit. And then now I'm pretty much fine. But how did you feel at the time? And did you worry? Oh, worried massively. Yeah, yeah. Over the next couple of years, it sort of was at the forefront of my mind every single day. And my biggest worry was, was how is she going to go into the adult world? And... Um, you know, how she's going to cope with job interviews and things like that. I suddenly saw Geordie having a very limited future. And that's not what you want for your child, is it? You want them to be out there and getting everything from life. And I just thought, my God, she, she's not going to she's not going to work. She's not going to be able to leave home, you know, panic stations. So. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm fine now. I'm yeah. fine now. With, yeah. With that kind of situation, I'm fine. I think I'm mainly fine with people I don't know, like complete strangers I'm like completely fine with because they don't know me but I think if they've got a significance to me like if I sort of know them but then don't it's a bit more like awkward because I feel like I need to be um, acting a certain way or that I shouldn't do certain things otherwise they might think badly of me. Georgie's whole demeanour would change from getting in the car at home on the car journey to taking you into primary school uh, a face this this she wouldn't just shut down that's not what i mean but she just looked totally different she didn't look it sounds stupid but she didn't look like my daughter georgie doesn't look like that you know and i do have a photograph downstairs and that's what she looks like when she was at school it's just like well that's not georgie because i don't no, know right. this screen came down and yeah because it's became, just a moment of worry she became a different person yeah. but she always went to school she never objected to going to school she just got on and did it georgie always sang in group situations you know when her, in, like in the, 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 yeah you know what i mean but i'm not good at singing it's things. not because i'm no. good at singing i'm really bad but, but yeah you would be happy there because everybody was doing it but yeah, yeah. Did you know what was wrong with me or understand the condition straight away or did it no, take a few years? No, I'd never heard of it before. It was, um, I think it was your um, reception year teacher who came out with the term selective mutism 
and that gave me something to grab onto. Was that Miss Godfield? Uh, yeah, it was. And so I went to the doctor about it and immediately hit with a brick wall. I mean, I don't know what to say about him really, but he was like, what's that? <laughs> I thought, oh, okay, <laughs> we're not getting far with this here, are we? So I actually worked a lot more with Mrs. Scofield yeah. um, than I did with, with the doctor. And uh, there was also a, a teacher, Miss Cora as well. Yeah. Yeah, who I, she suggested that I go in, not into the lessons, but go into yeah. school. And Georgie had, um, had the power, for want of a better word, to had to go and select three, four of the children yeah, from her come. class that she thought felt comfortable-ish yeah. with to come out of class and would sit and play a board game or something. And I was fine with that. Yeah. Still didn't say anything, though, or a great deal. Yeah. Um, but I didn't feel like... I can remember not feeling, like, scared. I just didn't really talk that much. And I feel like her classmates just accepted Georgie for what she was. I mean, they didn't tease her I don't think or bully no. her or they just accepted that Georgie was really quiet and um, just got on with it and I think they the children she selected to come out of class with they just thought ah oh, cool we'll go out of class. <laughs> yeah brilliant so yeah. but not much came of those sessions I don't feel yeah no. no nothing at all no there was no no benefit to it no. no and my next question like links in with that it was how did the school try to help Oh, right. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. By liaising with me, basically. And uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, even though at the time I didn't know what was going on and I didn't know what, what the reason for that was. was. Um, and I remember Miss Scofield, my reception teacher, taking me out of one of my lessons and talking to me. But I can't really remember what she was saying, because obviously I was like five years old. Or I something. think you were probably a little bit older than that, because Georgie was showing a lot of signs of anger at home as well and hostility towards uh, me and her dad and her brother and there'd be situations where Tommy would hurt himself and Georgie would laugh and think it was very funny Yeah, but I didn't actually <laughs> find it funny no but it was displaying signs of unusual behavior we thought that's, that that can't be right you know but like, so. I wouldn't laugh because I find it funny I'd laugh because the situation is a bit awkward Georgie didn't know how to deal with yeah. it basically and, and that's how she dealt with and it when, if somebody tells me off I would just laugh to be honest, she still does it. Yeah, I still love yeah, that. Yeah, you still do it in, in awkward, difficult situations. Georgie will start giggling and yeah. it took Even me a long time to get my head around that because I just thought, well, you arrogant little <laughs> thing. <laughs> just, you know, hindsight is a massive thing. And um, if I could go back and do it all again, I would be so much more tolerant. Yeah, that's a question just, later on. Oh, sorry. We'll wait for that then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and what was he on about? Um, it was on about how did school oh anger. Um, oh anger when I was doing yeah. my research apparently um, selective mutism when a kid's at school they're like really like don't say anything or don't talk and it did say when I was researching about it that when they get home often they are really like angry and they have like anger problems because they're yeah. taking it out or they're like feelings out on their parents like, and I don't really know if that's true because to me that sounds like they're almost like blaming their parents but I think it's more of a fact that you just got all this like like feelings inside and you just like need to let it out so it's mm. like yeah and i have a lot of regret about that because i think we could have handled her and the situation so much better and i don't think we helped her selective mutism whatsoever just by constantly getting on her case telling her off putting her in the porch and yeah the but then what else can you do and, and <laughs> on occasion she, she got a smack and i hate that i really hate that i wish i could just wipe that out of my memory and yeah just I remember just again. sitting in the I porch for like half an hour. Well, half an hour. I, I don't think it was ever that long. But and someone come to the front door, and I'm like, it's just stood there. Know, but what, you just yeah, but you can't. If your child misbehaves, you can't just let them get away with it. No, it was so difficult to know how best then to they're deal just with gonna her. Carry on. All I knew was I've got a child who was laughing at me while I was telling her off, and I was I know, like, oh my yeah. god. She's got to realise the implications of what she's just done, which was usually to Tommy or something. But yeah, yeah or, or throwing things and then across the room. Also, and... the laughing thing when people would talk to me or they'd say hello or something, my instinct would be just to laugh because I didn't know what else yeah. to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, it says here, what would you do to help? So, what were the things that you would try and do to, that you thought would help? Oh, okay. Well, back then, I thought, well, let's get her out in society, you know, <laughs> let's get her out in social situations and uh, the swimming lessons for a kickoff, um, and just 
if we were going out to bring Georgie and Tommy, of course, along with us and just try and include them in the conversation and just just show everybody the good, oh, this is what Georgie's been doing and hasn't she done well? And I don't know, it's a difficult one. Just trying to get her to get out there. And, and when people did talk to Georgie, for me to shut up and let her answer, but A, that was really hard, and B, she didn't answer. And, you know, that just created really awkward situations. So, yeah, ultimately, I would end up answering a question for her. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I Now, I think that um, pushing people into situations that are really uncomfortable mm. isn't a good thing. Yeah, I'd do it totally differently But now. I think pushing them into situations like just small things, like... It, I don't know, like just normal situations, but not but making them know that they don't have to talk. And eventually, like obviously, I wanted to talk, but I felt too scared to talk. Mm. But eventually, when you start to get comfortable and you don't feel under pressure, that's when you'll just start to like feel more comfortable with talking. Yeah. And I think there's a real lack of understanding of the older generations in our family as well um, of what. Georgie was going through she was yeah. just labelled shy think, because the older generation didn't have such terms as selective mutism in their day yeah. when they were growing up that they just didn't get it or just she was I think a lot shy. of people don't understand like anxiety and mm. that kind of thing because a lot of people well not a lot of people but some people don't like experience that at all and they're like completely confident with most situations and I don't understand how you can be completely comfortable with those situations. I just don't agree. I think everybody has some sort of anxiety in social situations at some point, just some more than others. And yeah, yeah. But I do think a lot of people don't understand it, and oh, they, yeah. and because they don't understand it, it means that they think it, you're that yeah. you, you're making it up, the, or that it's not as bad as you think it is. And the more you get out there and do this stuff, the better you'll be. But the, obviously, with selective mutism, yeah. it's on a whole new level. It yeah. it really is. It's almost physical, isn't it? It's not. It's mental and it's physical because you physically can't get those words out or yeah. or express yourself. It, yeah, because d- my dad used to have that too. Like from what he's explaining, it's exactly the same as me. And um, and it's just like you just feel like you can't talk. It's like it's very strange because like you want to say something, but you just like your mind's telling you to not do it because it, you know that you're going to say it wrong, and you just in your head think, I'm going to say it wrong, I'm going to say it wrong. And then usually if you do end up saying something, you do say it wrong. Like I end up saying it wrong for some reason. And then um, it just makes the whole thing worse Yeah, and it's just time. this constant yeah. thing in your mind. It's like, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. And mm. then you just think it's yeah. so much easier if I just don't say it. Mm. So it's not really a decision. Um, how did I act at home compared to other places? Uh, Georgie was very much in charge at home. Not in charge of us, but she tried to be. Um, she asserted herself all the time and even now she I don't know she's getting better but Georgie can't cope very well when um, she thinks certain things gonna happen and then we stick our oar in and say well no actually that that's not gonna be possible or we haven't got time for that and she's thinks, you know yeah because I like to make a list and I like to be organized and I like to do things in my day that I know I've got to do because if not I feel really uncomfortable because mm. I feel like really stressed out and I feel like I can't get my stuff done yeah. that I want to get done yeah she's always been very structured even yeah. with her play even as a child she'd sit on the worktop in the kitchen and she'd organize my tea bags <laughs> into lines or piles or yeah um her building blocks were always color coordinated and stacked up neatly you know things like that and yeah, I I felt at times Georgie was showing signs of Asperger's syndrome, you know. Um, they did say on my research that often selective mutism and Asperger's can be like confused or like linked together. Mm, yeah, and I did see the doctor again about this kind of behaviour and it was a different doctor this time. And she was like, well, you know, you know, a lot of children are like that. And she says, well, OK, I'll refer you. I'll refer to the children's mental health um, unit here in Lincoln. And... And that's when I thought, Jesus, is she really? I didn't want Georgie then to be going into life with all these different labels on it and to put her through. Yeah, because I think when you think there's something wrong, it makes it all worse because you feel like the, that you need to act as if there's something wrong. Because you was about seven or eight at this point, and you were, you. I think that's probably when you were at your worst and at your angriest. And also, Georgie did. I hope you don't mind me saying, start puberty around the age of seven or eight. She was really seven early. Seven or eight. You were very early. Oh the early, early signs were coming then, you know, and obviously hormones were like, Ooh. 
So it was a difficult time in the house, I think, back then for us all. And um, I don't know, I just didn't feel I wanted to put Georgie through all manner of God knows what tests and... I don't think that would have helped. It would have made I everything think, worse. I think it would have made worse. I think for worse. someone with selective mutism, that would make it all worse. This was it. She had obviously got um, self-awareness problem. Uh, what's that? That's not the right term, is it? She obviously... Um, Self-confidence? Self-confidence, yeah, issues. And I just thought that's just going to make her a million times worse. And Yeah. And I think when I started to realise that something was wrong, which I didn't actually realise something was wrong until like, after I'd mainly got over it, I, it got me thinking about it and it started to make me feel more anxious again mm. because you just feel like you've got a problem and I think when you don't think that you've got a problem and you see other people you start to act a bit like them and you think oh I want to be like them and it and often you can like always trick yourself into thinking that everything's okay and I don't know it's really hard to explain but I kind of like pretend that I'm somebody else like not somebody in particular but just like pretend that I'm a confident person whereas I think if you think that you've got something wrong with you then it's difficult to do that because you think well I'm never going to be able to be confident and mm. you like accept that you've got that problem mm. um what would you say like symptoms or signs of somebody who's got it are um well I clearly didn't know for at least a year that she was suffering from this until the playgroup lady Carol told me asked me about it so signs aren't great you know um but like i say taking george into school it was like her facial expression totally changed um and just yeah he, even being awkward with fairly close family members like my my sisters and, and their partners and uh, i think okay now I'm, now i'm fine with that and i'm fine with people in my family now yeah, yeah. Um, but i think when you're younger you just i don't know it's it's a lot different and yeah. you just feel a bit more awkward yeah. with everybody yeah it, it's hard to understand how can you be um not able to talk to close family members that we see a lot of the time yeah yeah mm. uh, i don't know it's a difficult one that one really. <clears throat> yeah it, it's a time i think thing. if you it's know that your child doesn't talk very much at school and they're shy or if mm. they act quite aggressive when they're at home or if they are a little bit mm. sort of i don't know act in a not very usual yeah which is sounds a bit strange but yeah yeah it, it's a time thing these things will start to come apparent and um, yeah feedback from the school was a massive help anyway in identifying it how would you change anything about how you dealt with it oh completely different yeah would never force georgie into situations would never force you into well force is a terrible word but we but we forced her to go to guides because we thought yeah. it would help her. Even though I think that probably did help me a bit because I think I went to guides with a friend, somebody who I knew. So mm. I think if you want to get your child to like come out of their shell a bit more, put them in a situation where they'll be with somebody that they know, like a friend. And guides was all right for me. And, and I think that would, would have helped a bit more. I hated taking her to the first session, but she was so excited when she came out of it. She was full yeah. of it. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And I was thinking, oh, yay. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, the swimming thing, I knew yeah, at the time swimming. she didn't enjoy it. I, I didn't enjoy it. Not because I didn't enjoy swimming. Because I did actually quite like the swimming part of it because it was very organised. And I, I liked the fact that they'd be like, okay, let's do two laps of front crawl, two laps of breaststroke. Oh, yeah. um, so and I liked the whole organised part of that. But I didn't like the fact that it was like a really like anxious. I don't know why, but I always used to get really nervous for swimming. And it's probably because you know that there's loads of parents watching you. And you're and also with children that you've never kids, met before. But you don't really. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, what I'd do differently, I wouldn't put Georgie under any pressure whatsoever to speak. Because now I know that she has done everything, not through my help, but through her own steam, through her own. Um, yeah determination i think you've got to like push them into like small situations but where they feel comfortable with that situation and eventually they'll come across like slightly uncomfortable situations but they'll get over it but, but if you push them into something really uncomfortable they're just gonna hate it knowing georgie now i think she would have put herself in those situations anyway yeah well i might have gone to swimming lessons no but, no but you would have done it on a smaller scale in your own good time oh yeah. yeah i would never pressurize it and i'd never say to somebody who Georgie doesn't know oh Georgie tell this lady what you've been doing at school this week I yeah. wouldn't say that because no. she wouldn't have said anything no. <laughs> you know and it, yeah it just made the situation worse putting pressure on her so um how do you feel about it now oh I feel sad um because 
when I watched Georgie's last video she said that she hated her childhood and that's quite hard to hear um, it makes me feel up even now you know it's I don't want Georgie to look back on her childhood with sadness and it started to make me look back on her childhood with sadness and uh, look at photographs and you know think oh she was going through that and you know I think family times are just sort of tainted by it now because she wasn't enjoying herself. I think I did and enjoy family activities I always enjoyed the holidays and stuff and I do look back on holidays like and I enjoyed them but I think in the back of my mind I also know that at the, that time I would still be slightly anxious about situations or I'd be still slightly anxious about knowing the fact I'd have to go back to school yeah, exactly. and I had just have memories of just being constantly nervous yeah. like every single day worried like seven months before something would happen or something or yeah. it had come to a point where I'd finished like um finished doing something that was really like anxious but then I would get anxious because I'd know that in the rest of my life there'd obviously be another thing that'd make me anxious so I was almost getting scared of being scared yeah um, like you'd worry for a whole year about sports day I mean that's yeah. just it's just that you know I didn't enjoy it either but yeah I didn't worry for a full year I just think god what a waste of a childhood you know spending all that time worrying yes yeah. yeah. but it does it makes me feel really sad but I think George is a stronger person because of it and I think because she's overcome it I really feel like the world's George's oyster you know she's dealt with this I feel like she can deal, deal with most things so yeah I think she's doing great <laughs> um, what advice would you give to other parents Ooh, um, don't put pressure on your child um, every situation is different obviously and um, yeah just don't don't put pressure on your child to do things. Don't put them into situations, like I say. But also, talk. Talk to your child about it. Talk to yeah. them about their feelings. Let them get it out, you know. I think we didn't talk about it a lot when we were younger. Probably me and her dad sort of whispering behind closed doors because we were worried about her and didn't want her to hear us talking about her because I didn't want her to feel like she was this weirdo thing. Um, sorry, that's not a good word. Um, <laughs> Well, I didn't want you to feel like you were unusual or or, yeah. or odd. Um, but yeah, just talk to your child about it and ask them what do you think would make you feel a bit more relaxed about things. I don't know, just communication. Yeah. Yeah. But like I say, each situation's different. Not every child or or, or adult even with selective mutism is going to have the same experience as Georgie so yeah and yeah. I can't give advice to anyone I can't I can tell them about my story and how I like felt and stuff but I can't really give advice because mm. I think even now I still struggle and my next question is do you still recognize any times when I appear to be anxious or like shy yeah definitely when you know there's going to be people in in it's usually in smaller groups I would say um, where you know people are going to be there that you haven't met before. If it's a bigger group, then you, you probably, like a school um, open day or something, then you're not obligated to talk to anybody no. specific. But when you're in a smaller situation and um, it's good, you know you're, it'll be weird if you don't say anything, it'll become really obvious that's when Georgia gets uptight still. Yeah. 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 I think sometimes nowadays I try and push myself to talk to people and I know that it's it, everything's going to be alright, there's yeah. nothing that's going to like like affect me and that most days I'm completely fine with that and most mm. days I can deal with that and that's probably why I feel like I've mainly recovered but I think sometimes I just can't, like, I just can't, don't want to talk and, mm. and I just just feel like I can't do a situation like even now. Julie's always able to say something now. Yeah, yeah, I can always talk. But, but I think what it is, is I still have that really anxious feeling inside of me, which is not very nice. She gets a little bit manic, I feel. A bit yeah. a bit hyper before yeah. the event. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I either get hyper because I'm excited about something, or oh, yeah. hyper... <laughs> she gets super because I when think she's excited It about sounds something. weird, but when I'm nervous for something now, I talk a lot, mm. which is the complete opposite. <laughs> yeah. But I, I just constantly talk because... I don't know. Prior to the situation, yeah, yeah, yeah. but when she's in the situation. But yeah, you are able to answer uh, questions and, and make conversation yeah. now. So yeah. Yeah. Um, and the final question, anything else? Anything else? Oh. Anything else? Um, mm, can't think. We seem to have covered an awful yeah. lot. I just, just want to say I'm really proud of you, Georgie. And I think it's made us closer as a family. And we do talk about a heck of a lot of stuff that yeah. I don't think maybe other families would do and yeah just and I did really also close. want to include other people's 
things like other people's stories on it in yeah. this video yeah. but i I'm, I'm not sure if i'm gonna do that because the video is 20, 25, 25 minutes, minutes long. long oh my god um, yeah so I i'm a real talker i don't think i'm gonna do that now but i have had loads of people talk to me about their yeah. stories as well so i'm probably gonna do that in another video at some point this is why i wanted us to talk about it you know have my input as well because i've been quite gobsmacked with how many views Jordy's uh, videos had and it's is actually pretty common yeah yeah, yeah. who knew yeah <laughs> Yeah, I think cool. the reason why it gets lots of views is because it people don't usually make videos on it because it isn't that that common, but um, it, but it is a recognised thing yeah. these days, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. and it's, that's probably only really yeah because people comment on the comment section. They message me on YouTube and they've messaged me on Instagram saying that they've seen the video and then they send like a long paragraph about it. So I do want to do a whole video based on that just so that I can talk about other people's stories mm. as well because their stories are kind of similar to mine but also kind of different at the same time and some people do tell me how they got over it and all that kind of thing. Mm. I don't um, think people will actually really get over it but no yeah. but yeah. how they manage to deal with it. Yeah yeah. So yeah yeah this is the end of the video any comments leave them down below yeah in the description if you've got any questions for me put them in there yeah. and I'll, I'll reply mum yeah. will reply she's called yeah. Gigi's mama oh so, yeah but yeah Georgie yeah. will make me aware if anybody's asked me anything so I'll, yeah. Uh, yeah yeah so thank you for watching and okay. I'll see you in my yeah. next video which should be on Saturday at 9am okay bye, bye.